Today, in under 12 minutes, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know in order to size your off-grid solar system with batteries for off-grid use and DIY projects. This is the basics, but I'm going to give you everything you need to know to do it yourself. And you may be asking what qualifies me to be able to give this information. Well, for one thing, I previously had a career as a solar energy sales guy. So I have a formal education in solar and a certificate to design systems. I've sold uh, solar for over five years and now I'm doing it myself on my own projects. So today's agenda, we're going to take a look at the big picture concept to better understand how solar energy systems are sized and the way that they size the panels the key metrics that you're gonna to need to know in order to do your own installation, all the items that you need to know, and the math to determine what battery capacity and solar array sizing you'll need. And by the end, we'll size the system for my off-grid cabin. Now let's get into some key metrics. First, let's talk a little bit about the PV output. So PV is just photovoltaics, that just means solar panels. And solar panel output is rated based on some fixed variables. So they do this so that all solar panels are tested the same way and are basically apples to apples comparison. So the manufacturer will test in a controlled area the solar irradiance at one kilowatt per square meter, the ambient temperature at 77 degrees, and the air mass at a 1.5 rating. That metric I'm not as familiar with, but I know it has to do with the clarity of the air and how much light is getting through. So basically they're fixing the amount of light, the temperature, and the air quality so that we can all have standard testing. So once we know the wattage of a panel, we can then uh, look up the peak hours of sun in a given region, and that will allow us with a high degree of accuracy to estimate how many kilowatt hours in a year that system will produce. The second major thing is to calculate your usage. Now this can be a little bit trickier and it's definitely not as scientific or it can be harder to be as scientific because essentially what you need to do is create a list of every appliance, light bulb, item that takes energy, estimate how many hours it will run and know the wattage and basically determine the kilowatt hours per day that you're gonna be using. I believe there's also online calculators to help with this. So give that a Google search and see if there's something out there that might be a little bit more helpful. And we'll go through it together as well. My example is my cooler, otherwise known as my fridge, which draws 48 watts and it's gonna run for 20 hour, 24 hours a day, of course. <laughs> so we take our 48 watts, multiply those by 24 hours to get 1.15 kilowatt hours a day of usage for that fridge. That'll come in later. Next, we wanna size our batteries. So we basically work backwards from estimating our usage to determine how much battery capacity that we need. This is you know, the amount of energy that you're gonna use in a given period, whether that's a day, a week, a month, a year. Batteries are often rated in amp hours. So in order for us to determine the battery amp hour uh, required, we're gonna take our kilowatt hours that we calculate multiply by a thousand, divide that by a voltage and we'll get amp hours. And that's just typically from what I've seen how a lot more batteries, especially online, are communicated. So that'll give us that apples to apples metric so that we can then go ahead and determine how many batteries of the given size that we need to make sure that we're covering all of our usage. The other thing, is we wanna be conservative with all of our numbers. So we're gonna calculate all of this as if we're going 24 hours without sun, so that when we have a real life application, we should never go without having enough power, especially if we do our math and calculations correctly. Now to size our batteries. So we're gonna use my real life application for my off-grid cabin. This is a very small, dry little cabin, so I'm not gonna have a lot of need, but I do have three main things that I'm planning for. Number one is a heat pad so that I can heat up my rainwater catchment system retaining tank. Um, that's the storage tank that I keep it in. And in the winter time, it will definitely freeze because that's a, while the cabin's insulated, there's no heat when I'm not there and it gets you know down to zero, especially in the dead of winter. And so I'm going to be installing a heat pad along with a brand new rainwater catchment system. That heat pad draws 65 watts. I'm being super conservative in saying that I'm gonna run it for 24 hours a day. There's no way that should be necessary, but in the absolute worst conditions, um, you know that's what we're planning for. So if we have 65 watts running 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that's 10.9 kilowatt hours a week. I'm doing all this by the week. You can do it by the day, by the month. Um, I'll end up converting back and forth, but it's all just a matter of you know, multiplying or dividing by seven days to get through that. Now the fridge runs 48 watts. That will definitely run 24 hours, and in a week, that'll take 8.1 kilowatt hours. 
Lastly is my water pump. It's a, a 12 volt, 8.6 amps. It didn't have the wattage rating on it, but that's okay because we know that volts times amps is watts. So we take our 12 volts by our 8.6 amps and we know that's 105 watts that that pump is gonna pull. Now again, I was conservative because I don't imagine that pump will ever run for an hour a day. All that's doing is pressurizing our water system. Not only am I barely ever up there, but when I'm there, we probably will only have that pump running for like 10 or 15 minutes based on our water usage. So I'm trying to be conservative and estimate more hours than I think is gonna be necessary. By doing that, we see that I need seven, or we'll use 7.4 kilowatt hours a week with that water pump. Now I have a heat pad, a fridge, and a water pump. I will never actually have that heat pad and fridge running at the same time. That's because I do not use the fridge in the winter. And so just basic logic means that we're gonna size this with the two of those that takes the larger draw, which is that heat pad. Because in this, the heat pad will be used in the winter time and the fridge will be used in the summertime. They'll never really both be utilized in the same day. So with that being said, we're gonna take our 10.9 kilowatt hours that we're estimating for the heat pad usage add our 7.4 kilowatt hours for our pump to get a 18.3 kilowatt hours a week consumption. Now, we're gonna convert that to amp hours because that's what we're gonna to use to size the battery. So to do so, we take our kilowatt hours, we multiply by a thousand and divide by the voltage. So if we take our 18.3 kilowatt hours, multiply by a thousand and divide by 13.5, we get 1,356 amp hours a week. We'll use that to figure out our battery sizing. Um, now with this one, I'm gonna convert that back to per day. So it's kind of silly, but this is just the way that I found it to be easier to think through averages. Uh, but to size this system, if we take our 1355 amp hours, divide by seven days, we're gonna need 193 amp hours a day. So that means we're basically gonna need 200 amp hours. You know, we're always gonna round up. We're always gonna be conservative. I'd even like to round up more than that, but a lot of these batteries come in a 100 amp hour rating, so I can just get two of those and I should be good to go. And keep in mind, this is accounting for zero extra energy production. So in theory, this means if my pumps run an hour a day, if my heat pad is on for 24 hours, I can go a full day just on those batteries without running those dry without any other draw. So we're gonna go ahead and use that to figure out sizing the solar array. Uh, or at least our usage. The solar array will be 10.9 kilowatt hours plus our 7.4 for 18.3 like we saw on the last slide. We're gonna work backwards from that and we're gonna take our 18.3 kilowatt hours a week and divide by seven days again to get 2.61 kilowatt hours a day. So this is gonna show us our usage on a daily rate in kilowatt hours, and we're gonna use that to size our solar panels. So for this uh, exercise, let's use the assumption that we're looking at panels that are rated for 250 watts. So if we're gonna do 250 watt panels, the only other piece of information we're gonna need is our sun peak hours for your specific area. Um, this is something you can Google. They'll have a lot of cities throughout the United States and you wanna find one that's close to you, ideally probably further um, to the north or so that you can have a conservative estimate. For us here, uh, Vancouver, Washington was one of the closest ratings that I was able to find, which was 3.5 summer peak hours and 1.6 winter peak hours. And we always want to design our system in the worst case scenario. So that means we're gonna use those less hours in the winter time. In the winter, we're gonna have darker days. We're gonna have that heat pan running. And so we're gonna use that 1.6 winter peak hours to do this calculation. So looking at the bottom of this slide, we've got 2.61 kilowatt hours a day divided by our 1.6 peak hours is 1631 watts of solar panels. Again, we always wanna round up for here. So if we take that 1631, divide by 250 watt panels in this example, that tells us we need six and a half panels. So of course we're gonna round up, we're gonna call that seven, and most likely we're actually gonna use eight or more just to be safe. The other thing I'll mention really quick is that we're also going to uh, be determining the system sizing and the panel size based on strings for an inverter. At least in traditional solar systems, the inverter will only have specific inputs of voltage and amperage ranges. So usually an inverter will only be able to take X number of panels and that's really gonna also dictate our system. In traditional setups, 
For me, I'm doing a pure DC system, so I have a lot more leeway because all I'm gonna have is a charge controller and the batteries, I will have no inverter. So that's just a side note for us, we don't need to worry about inverter sizing because I'm not using an inverter, but I will go ahead and use that information uh, to make sure that if I were, I have it correct. And now that we're just doing DC with a charge controller, we have a lot more freedom in our sizing. Now, lastly for the solution. So as a recap of what we just did in part one, we determined our estimated usage in kilowatt hours per day. Part two, we calculated our battery sizing based on average kilowatt hours a day converted to amp hours. And lastly, we sized our solar array based on our estimated usage, utilizing a safety factor, rounding up and finding a system that works for your needs based on that math and rounding up and being conservative. So I hope this was really helpful for you guys. The whole point of this channel is to create more self-sufficient people and to live off the land. So I hope you can use some of this information to do your own DIY project. Now I source a lot of these products on Amazon. You can find them used on you know sites like OfferUp and other places, Facebook, Marketplace, all that kind of stuff. So don't be afraid to go out there to do your own uh, system. And if you're doing something brand new, you wanna size it for your usage and needs and hopefully everything that we went through will give you all the information you need to do to do just that. My mission is self-reliance through sustainable living and we're here to build a community. Click here to subscribe to be sure to get more awesome content for living off the land. And be sure to go in to enter for notifications. Click that bell, get notifications and stay in tune. Subscribe, watch and comment. Let's build a community. See you soon.